here at the School of Chemistry at the University of Manchester, the world's smallest fuel-powered motor has been invented. For many years now, there's been a drive to understand and control things at ever smaller and smaller scales down in the nanotechnology realm. We can't simply take a, uh, a petrol engine and shrink it down to the size of a, of a molecule. It's got to apply new sorts of principles which are actually the same ones that biology uses in which to power processes in the cell. We're trying to do in days or weeks or months what nature has perfected over thousands or hundreds or millions of years. These motors, motor molecules, are, are absolutely tiny. Each one is only a millionth of a millimetre wide. In that uh, round bottom flask, there's 10 million, million, million of them. And at the moment, they're just jingle jangling around, moving uh, back and forward, but with no uh, directionality associated with them. It's just like having a, a bag full of these motors all jumbled up together. And so although the components are spinning, they're all spinning in at different angles and in different ways. And it's only when we are able to power them with a chemical fuel that this jingle jangle motion stops. The components all start to move in the, in the same direction and they rotate just like the wheels of a car, all with the same directionality. If we were able to immobilize those on a, on a surface and have them all going, uh, moving the components in the same way, that's when you can use this as a useful technology to maybe power muscles or other kinds of exciting material types of applications. This is a classic example where, in a way, the research is kind of ahead of potential applications. It's that fundamental in nature. And I don't think anybody really knows where this could go or just how exciting it could be. If you kind of look at it from a historical perspective, we're simply building on the work that's been done here many, many years ago. It's fantastic that we've been able to achieve this uh, world's first in Manchester. It's great for the city going forward to see it at the forefront of a really exciting area of nanotechnology and, and at the cutting edge of, of science.